If I was put on a desert island, me and a cube, and given unlimited time, would I eventually figure out how to solve it, or do you need to know how to solve it? Do you need to be taught? It sort of depends how you go about it, which a lot of people think, you know, if I just keep twisting, it's bound to fall back into place. That's impossible, because the Ruby's Cube is just too complicated. Um, if you were to guess, just based on how it looks, how many permutations would you think that this holds? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, billions? <laughs> Every single Rubik's Cube has 43 quintillion permutations, and a quintillion is a billion billion. So it's a billion squared. It's 10 to the power of 18, which is a number most people can't even comprehend. If you were going to stack every single possible Rubik's Cube permutation from end to end, it would extend several hundred light years into space. Wow. But the on the other hand, if you focus on trying to actually develop a strategy, you certainly can succeed. Uh, for instance, the man who created it in our Rubik, he, he didn't have a choice. He didn't know if he could solve it. So you have talked in the book about some of the latest math. That we're still kind of learning the, the intricacies of Rubik's Cubes. And, and when it comes to how efficiently you can solve things, Google made a recent breakthrough, right? Yeah, within the last uh, couple of years, uh, a problem was finally solved that had been stumping people for a very long time, which is called the God's number problem. So every Rubik's Cube, in theory, or every permutation has an optimal solution, right? And for a long time, it's been an open question, what is the size of that optimal position in terms of the number of moves? How efficient is it possible to be? Only after the use of some supercomputers at Google whose specifications remain under wraps was it determined that 20 is God's number. In other words, if there were an omniscient being given a Rubik's Cube, that omniscient being would be able to solve it in 20 moves or fewer every single time. Oh, I see. There is a separate competition called the fewest moves competition, which is the most mathematically minded of the mm. Rubik's Cube 17 different events that we do. You have an hour, and you try to come up with the most efficient solution possible. So if, if I were doing that, I could spend a lot of time looking at this and deciding, trying to figure out, is there a more efficient means of doing this than you know, the algorithm I know, which does that. 